a revival that we should be thankful for. Seven straight Sundays, someone receiving the gift of the Holy Ghost. And we are thankful for that. We want the Lord to have his way tonight. Mark chapter 3, I'm a little scattered here. This is a, that's the first time I've played drums in like 15 years. Mark chapter 3, verse 1, he entered again into the synagogue, and there was a man there which had a withered hand, and they watched him, whether he would heal him, on the Sabbath that they might accuse him. And he saith, unto the man which had the withered hand, stand forth. And he saith unto them, it is lawful to do good on the Sabbath day, or to do evil, to save life, or to kill. But they held their peace. But when he had looked round about on them with anger, being grieved for the hardness of their hearts, he saith unto the man, stretch forth thine hand. Somebody say, stretch forth thine hand. And he stretched it out, and his hand was restored whole as the other. The Pharisees went forth straightway, took counsel with the Herodians against him, how they might destroy him. I had something on my mind the last few days, and I'm going to just try to work it in here tonight. But I want to preach on the subject, when God says stretch. When God says stretch. I wanted to see which, which graphic they chose. I sent three of them. <laughs> Amen. You may be seated. I was raised that God believing that God can do anything. I was raised in an apostolic church that preached that no matter what your need was, God could do it, and God could do it quickly. Does anyone know that kind of atmosphere of church, that you went to church because you fully believed that God was able to meet your need no matter what the need was? It was just never over with him. He can do anything, anytime, and he doesn't need any help meeting the need, and he can do it so quickly that no matter what it is, in one moment, everything can change, and he doesn't have to give me a word. He can think the miracle, and it can manifest in my life. That's how powerful he is. He, the first miracle he did, he turned water into wine. He never even said, water become wine. He thought it, and water became wine. That's my God. He can think about you, and you can be healed. You can be delivered. You can be changed. You can be rescued. I know the thoughts that I think towards you, saith the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give you an expected end. Are you thankful for a God that thinks about you? David said, what is man that thou art mindful of him? Or the son of man that thou would visit him? And we all believe that God can do it quickly no matter what's going on. But that doesn't mean he always does it quickly. It's like a lead balloon. A lot of times, God does not move at the pace I want him to move. A lot of times, God does not answer at the speed I request his answer in. And sometimes, it doesn't make sense to me, but when he's trying to get me to a further point in him than where I currently am, he uses a formula called unanswered prayers to get me there. Mm -hmm. See, some people will quit on this message because if you don't get your answer, you backslide. That's why you skip every other service possible. But for the people that really are going to live for God, whether he answers them or not, I can tell you unanswered prayers is not God being mean. It's God working something in you that you need to see. Being casual will lead to casualty, and oftentimes we relax in our struggle. I'm going to say a heavy statement right here, and I want you to get this, and I hope you don't get offended, but we fully expect God to fix everything, and we call that faith. We fully expect God to fix everything, and we call that faith. I'm going to say it to you all hearing. <laughs> because we're not paying attention to everything right now. We fully expect God to change everything in our life, and we call it faith. The problem with that is when he doesn't do it, we get an attitude. 
No matter what our mess is, no matter what the situation is, God can, and we believe that, can fix it. But when we start thinking he's supposed to fix it, we call that faith. God, that's why I come. God can do anything. He's supposed to do it. And when he doesn't do it, we get an attitude. We skip church like half the congregation is tonight. We don't want to make an effort because when we don't get what we want and God, God was supposed to, I know it's going to get real quiet, but we get this internal self-pity going on where God let me down. And so because God let me down, I'm going to let him down. I'm going to show him how big of a pity party I can throw. It's quiet, but it's true. He didn't fix it, so I'll show him. He didn't do what I was asking him to do. I'll show him. I'm done praying in the morning. I'm done reading my Bible. I'm done paying my tithes. I'm done being faithful. I'm done being at every service. I didn't get what I thought he was supposed to give me. Now, I won't tell the pastor that. I won't tell the church that, but that's between me and God. He didn't do what I wanted him to do. And we're in a standoff. And the problem is, He's using unanswered prayers to get my attention, but I'm so prideful and so stubborn and so hard-headed that when he starts ignoring me, I still push for my answer. I still push for what I want him to do for me, and I keep pressing and pressing, give me what I want, give me what I'm requesting, but the problem is what I want isn't what I need, and therefore he's trying to get me out of what I want and connect me to what I And if you pray long enough, hear me somebody, about the same thing and God doesn't answer it, if you really love the Lord, you will stop saying, give it to me, and start saying, what is wrong with me? What can I do to change? What am I doing wrong? God, forgive me. And before long, you're not even praying the same type of prayer because God's trying to work Second Chronicles chapter 7, verse 14 said, If my people which are called by my name shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face, and here's the tough one, and turn from their wicked ways. We got the humbling ourselves, seeking and praying part down. But sometimes God is saying, I can't give you what you want until you change some things about your ways. You're still arrogant. You're still insecure. You're still full of doubt. You're still a gossiper. You're still unfaithful. And until you change your ways, I cannot heal your land. I cannot give you your answer. All the humbling, praying, and seeking is pointless if there is no change in our ways. So when God wants me to change my ways, he doesn't answer my request. Sorry, y'all are bored, but this is really good. When God doesn't answer me, he's not trying to be mean to me. He's trying to shift me into a different mentality. I'm missing something. I have a blind spot somewhere, and he's trying to show me something that's beside me that I need to correct. So instead of backsliding, I'm never going back to church. I'm going to refocus and get up earlier tomorrow and pray harder and seek the word until I'm in alignment with his will. And to change us, he stretches us. Stretch means to extend fully, to extend forcibly beyond one's proper limits to spread out, to reach. He will make us reach beyond what we think we should have to. Ooh. When he doesn't come through, it forces me to pray longer. When he doesn't answer my prayer, it forces me to search deeper. It forces me to change some things and shift some things and stretch some things, and I don't want to do it at all because it's so much easier to backslide and quit and pout because I didn't get what I wanted. 
That's called being a spiritual toddler, and you're throwing a tantrum every time you don't get your way. Sooner or later, you've got to grow up and say, he didn't answer me, but he's still worthy of my faithfulness and my worship and my praise and my adoration. It's got to grow up. Some people, if I don't text you, if I don't call you, if I don't encourage you, you will backslide on me in a New York second. And the reason is is because you are used to getting everything you want. But the second I don't do for you what you want, you're going to throw a pity party. You've got to grow up sooner or later and realize if you're going to be something in God, sometimes he stretches you. Sometimes he delays the yes. He delays the position. He delays the building. Sometimes he stretches us beyond what we think. I don't think I should have to climb the stairs and carry a lame man to a roof, Brother Potter, and break through. I think I should just be able to go through the open door. But he didn't let them go through the open door. He stretched them and said, carry your burden longer than you thought you'd have to carry it because that's how I'd build faith in you when you know I should have let this down. I should have quit on my loved one already, but I can't let him go. Hey, he's stretching me to go higher than where I've been before. When I cross the Jordan River and think, finally, we're in the promised land, he says, not quite. You've got to walk around a city wall 13 times in seven days. Haven't I done enough? Oh, boy, help me, Jesus, with this part. Haven't I done enough? Isn't this all the Lord requires of me? I mean, I'm, it's like you start comparing yourself to people in the Bible. You're like, I'm pretty much like Moses. It's like, no, you're not, dude. Pretty much like the apostles. Really, they were beheaded for this. They were executed. I could go through the list of all the ways they died. You are not like the apostles. I am not like them. We think that our soul, boy, help me, Jesus, but our suffering in North America relates to public execution. Like the, I'm sorry, but I think that a lot of people went through a whole lot worse. I know you're not going to get with me on that. I'm not making light of your trial. But sometimes God has to stretch us and say, you're never going to be anything until you learn to grow. Remember in Acts 12, Peter and James get arrested. Church is having a cute little prayer meeting. James dies. That prayer meeting didn't work. Oh, God will make a way. He's like, nope, there's James' head. So what do they do when Peter's about to get executed? Acts chapter 12 and verse 5 said he was kept in prison, but prayer was made without ceasing of the church. Without ceasing in the Greek means stretched out. In other words, they said we're not going to stop the prayer meeting until he gets out. You can come and go as you please, but they called an all-nighter. And they say, we're not going to stop until something, I know some of you have no idea what an all-night prayer meeting is. It's where you pray all night long until you touch God. And something changes in your situation. And you go from your seven-minute prayer life to a seven-hour prayer life. Some things only happen when we extend beyond expecting God to come through. I'm not expecting God to do it while I sit here comfortably and carnally. Come on, Lord, send the rain. Come on, Lord, send revival. Come on, Lord, I'm faithful. That's not what's going to bring revival. What's going to bring revival is going to multiply on Wednesday night, bringing your family, bringing your coworker. It's not normal, but I'm stretching myself. I'm going beyond what I normally am. Sometimes you have to stretch for the supernatural. If you want supernatural things in your ministry, in your family, in your life, you've got to learn to stretch beyond your limitations. If you don't believe me, go read your Bible. There's about 120 verses with the word stretch or stretched in your Bible. And a lot of times it was God telling them to do it. 
Stretch forth your hand, Moses. Stretch forth the rod, Aaron. Stretch forth the rod, Moses. Stretch forth your spear, Joshua. There were several times in the Bible that God said, stretch forth everything. Why? Because when I'm about to do something, I cannot do it with you comfortable. I'm about to go big, but you're thinking too small. I want to do something amazing. But you've got to get out of that mentality. This is my chair. That's my parking spot. This is my guest. Who cares what chair you get to sit on? Who cares what parking spot you fit in? Who cares who talks to your guest? We've got to stretch ourselves to go beyond where we are. Lady comes to the prophet as a dead kid in the house. She said, hey, my son's dead, the one you promised all these blessings to. He's dead, Elijah. Are you trying to call my sin back? Are you trying to bring up my shame? And, and Elijah said, bring me the kid. And the Bible said Elijah stretched on the kid, Brother Joel, three times. This is so powerful, and I know you know this if you've come to this church more than 10 minutes, but I promise you find in your Bible, no one had ever been raised from the dead up until this point. No kid, no man, no woman has been raised from the dead, and Elijah, the one who calls down fire, the one who calls down rain, the one who does all kind of miracles knows a normal prophetic prayer doesn't raise this kid up. I'm going to have to stretch for this one, and I might have to stretch more than one time. Let me tell you Help, oh, help me, Jesus, if we're going to see our youth revive. It's going to take more than, oh, well, I believe God's going to grow it. I believe God's going to send them. We need some people that will start stretching for it, start fasting for it, start seeking for it. I've got to see a revival in the young people. We've got to see it in the Sunday school. Someone must stretch for it. Some things only happen when you stretch. And Elijah cast his mantle later on on Elisha. And Elisha goes to a lady's house. She's barren. He, you know the story. She builds him a little chamber. He tells her she's going to have a baby. She has that baby. Years later, the boy grows up. The boy goes out in the sunshine, in the heat, has a heat stroke, and dies. She goes to Elisha and said, hey, I, I've, got a, I've got a prayer request. Is everything okay? All is well. And God, Elisha said to his servant, take my staff and go to the dead kid. And just lay my staff on the kid. It'll be all right. Just I'm the prophet. So the servant goes. He's like, oh God, a rod. Comes back. It didn't work. That'll humble you. Right when you think you're something spiritual. Oh, let me help me help somebody right now. Right when you think you're the church prophetess. Right when you think you're the you're God's gift of the spirit to the body. He has a way of saying, just kidding. You still need me. If you can, I'm off my notes, but if you control the gift, it's not the gifts. The, oh, I'm sorry. If you control the gift, I'm, I'm going to get into it now, it's not the gifts of the Spirit. You're operating under the wrong angel. The gifts have to control you. That way, no matter what the situation is, you can step into what is being requested in the Spirit. Uh, just go stretch my, just put my staff on his face, he'll live. He said it didn't work, so Elisha knows there's this, this what I thought I had isn't working. God isn't saying no, God is saying stretch. God isn't saying you're powerless. He's saying you still need me. Go beyond what you think is perfect. Go, well, this is all I've got. All i got to do is got to show up on Sunday morning around 11 o'clock, sit there for an hour, and that's all I need to do for this church. Some of you have that mentality. That's why you're still not serving in here. But if you would ever get into a mentality, it's what can I be? What can I do? How can I get involved? You'd find out that we need you more than Sunday morning for one hour in a chair. We need you to be involved. I'm pastoring tonight. I hope you don't get offended. But sometimes we need to pray harder. We've got to fast longer. We've got to give more. We've got to stretch ourselves beyond. Stop blaming God. Well, if he wanted to bless me, he would. He's going to bless you, but you've got to get that self-pity out of the way and say, what can I do in the kingdom of God?
waiting while withered. This is the man in our text. He is sitting at the house of God with a withered or, in the Greek, deformed hand. He's in church, but it's not enough. Help me, Jesus. I'm going to say what I wrote down. It's not enough just to come to church, especially just on Sundays. Well, pastor, get with the times. I am with the times. That's why I'm telling you that. The times have never been worse than they are. I am connected. Are you? Because if you're connected, you would be at every service you could be. I have got about this much patience for the nonstop, I can't make it to church, every service people. If you knew what was chasing you, you'd be at every service you could possibly be at. You would be at everything you could be at because of what hell is using it. My head hurts. Come to church and get healed. Like that little joke, the disciples, one one of the disciples has a golf bag on his back, and he's behind Jesus and goes, sorry, Lord, I can't make it to prayer today. I got a cold. Jesus goes, you're healed. You'll get it. Oh, Lord, help us, dear God. And so I love what Brother Potter said. Brother Potter said, with all kind of pain in his back, all kind of horrible things, and we're going to believe God to heal Brother Potter in Jesus' name. And he said, I can hurt at home or I can hurt at church. I'd rather be at church. That's what I'm talking about. Give me that type of mentality. That's how we have revival right there. Give me that type of soul. That's what we need. That's what we need. He's in church, but it's not getting his hand healed. He's on the right chair. He's in the right atmosphere. Jesus is there. He's at the right church. He's still not healed. This is, if you didn't like the last part, you're going to hate this part. My wife's like, never preach this again. Sorry, this is, this is just what I got. You ready? Jesus said, stand up. My hand isn't working. Yeah, but your feet are. This will never get you delivered. This will never get you healed. This will never get you a miracle. Jesus said, get on your feet. But I got to, you're right. Just because there's one issue doesn't mean you cannot be involved somehow, somewhere, in some other way. Oh, my hand doesn't work, but your feet do, so you can still dance. My feet does, don't work, but your hands do, so you can still worship. My hands and feet don't, but your voice does. And David said, lift up your voice and magnify God. Don't tell me you can't be involved. Let everything that hath breath praise ye the Lord. I don't feel it, but he's worthy. I'm hurting, but he's worthy. I'm sick, but he's worthy. I'm, I love You're going to find that it feels better to be on your feet praising God than it does to sit back and watch everybody. There's something about being engaged with the atmosphere of praise and worship that just pulls you out of depression and out of worry and out of the stress you're under. Lift up your hands and praise him. Clap your hands and praise him. Lift your voice and praise him. Find something and get up. You can do it. You can still be a prey, but I'm broke, but he's still worthy. Once he gives me the job, I'll be a praiser. No, you won't. You're lying. You're saying if he gives you money, 
you'll praise him. That's because you actually praise money. But he said, you need to praise me if you have the money or don't have the money. Because I can give you the money in one second. But it's not based on what I do for you. It's based on who I am. It's based on what I've done already for you. That's why I praise and worship him. Stretch forth thine hand. This, this, this story is recorded in Matthew, Mark, and Luke. Luke said it was his right hand. But stretch forth thine hand. Wait a second. Wait a second. Jesus did not say, stretch forth the deformed hand. This is going to be really fun. This is not my notes either. Boy, I'm really off tonight. No more drum playing. He said, stretch forth thine hand, which means the, the guy has a choice. I can stretch forth the hand that makes me look good. Or I can push forth the hand that makes me look handicapped. I can protect my image. Or I can get healed. I can look good to you and impress you. Or I can say, I don't know what it feels like, but it's going to go straight to Jesus right now. Hear me, if some of you would stop worrying about your image and your reputation and what people thought about you, you'd get a breakthrough right now that you would never walk away from the same. But your mind is on other people. Who cares what they think? Stretch forth thine hand and get an answer from God. Stretch out the deformity, the weakness, the issue, the struggle. For the show altar, it means he can push his hand. He cannot move his hand, but he can move his arm. In other words, if he could stretch out his hand, he, would, he wouldn't need a miracle. But he can still move his arm. It's just that his hand can't do anything. And Jesus is saying, be real with me in my house. Don't be a faker sitting there acting like you're fine in church when you've got an issue, when you've got a handicap, when you've got a situation. How can you not be desperate? How can you not be serious? How can you not be real? But if I go to the altar, they'll think something about me. You're distracted by the wrong people. Make your weakness move toward Jesus. I like shouting altar calls, but I really like altar calls when people bring their struggle to the altar. Let me say it another way. I like it when people drag the demon to the altar that's been messing with them all week long, and they say, you're not, you're not surviving this altar call. You're not going home with me. You're not tormenting my kids. You're not, ma'ashata. You're not messing with my husband tonight. Get out. I'll drag you up here. Is there anyone ready for a real touch from God? You've got to bring forth the thing that you can't change. You mean he expects me to stretch even though I'm feeling sorry for me? Apparently, he wrote it. If he tells a guy with a withered hand, move it, I have a hard time convincing him why I don't want to need to be faithful. My head hurts. My head always hurts. Welcome to pastoring. Remember that last time my head did not hurt. You can be more for God if you'll get your limitations erased that you've built up yourself. Well, I skip every other service. I skip every other prayer meeting. I, I skip all the prayer meetings. Sorry, that was for free. 
I skip. That's just what we do because, you know, too much church wears me out. Too much church, just, you know, it's just I'm too tired. You're too tired or you won't stretch. Because don't tell me you're being renewed more at home watching the game than you are in this atmosphere when he's dealing with the thing that you need. And he stretched it out. Someone say, he stretched it out. I'm not healed, but I'm reaching for it. I'm not better, but I'm going for it. I don't have a building, but I'm acting like I'm going to get one. I don't have the answer, but I'm not done until I get it. I don't have the job, but I will get the job. I don't have the peace, but I'm reaching for it. Is there anybody reaching for it right now? I That's why we come on Wednesday night, because nothing is perfect. So I reach. Paul said, forgetting the things that are behind, reaching for those things that are before. I press toward the mark of the prize of the high calling of Jesus Christ. Stretching it out means go as far as you can go for God. Get as in as you can get in. Ooh. Get. I better not say this part. Well, there's nothing for me to do. You can come help me set up every service. Well, I would, but they don't ask me. I'm not going to ask you. I got too many people that will help me. I know that they're here. But you can be involved, bro, if you want to be involved. Don't give me that. What if he doesn't heal me? What if he doesn't provide for me? What if he doesn't answer me? And I go all out and I obey his word and he doesn't fix it. Then you can say, That God, for the first time in the history of the world, let somebody down when they stretched for him. Well, I paid my tithes last month, and I'm struggling. Let me tell you something. Everybody struggles from time to time. But here's the problem you and I have. We see things differently because you're seeing everything from right now. God's not doing anything for me. I'm seeing things how God sees them. He's already at the finish line. He's already at you going through the streets of gold. He already knows you're going to come through this trial that you're in right now. And so you've got to get a heavenly view This too shall pass. We will survive this. We will come through this. Stay standing. I'm done. Restoration. He said when he stretched it forth that he restored it whole as the other. The word restore means to put something back to its former state. tells me he wasn't born this way. Chase, his hand used to move. His hand used to have movement. If he was born deformed, this he would not need to be restored. He would need a brand new miracle to where his hand was completely whole. But when God said he restored it, it's because something in life crippled it and said it will never move again. And God said, you don't know who you serve. You serve the one that restores years. Read the book of Joel. He said, I'll restore the years the canker worm and the palmer worm have taken. I just want to tell somebody on Wednesday night, I'm glad you came. And here's why. God said to tell you, whatever you have lost, if you will start stretching yourself to me, I will restore unto you all the things the adversary has been stealing from you. If you will be real with me, if you will stretch yourself, I will restore What you have lost. 
Somebody grab the word right now in your deformity and say, that's mine. I speak restored anointing. I speak restored vision. I shokata. I speak restored peace, peace of mind. I speak restored finances in your house in the name of Jesus. I speak restoration to your marriage. I speak restoration to your job. I speak restoration to your emotions. I have had more calls in the last six days. And I've had the entire time we've been here. And because everybody is being attacked right now, stressed out of their mind. And God told me late last night, tell them, the ones that are stressed out, I'm going to restore peace tonight in their house. I'm going to... I'm going to restore strength in their house tonight. I'm going to restore love in their home tonight. I close. Isaiah 54. One through three, sing, O barren. Thou that didst not bear, break forth into singing. Cry aloud, thou that is not true. He's talking to somebody that couldn't have a baby. Couldn't have revival. The one that couldn't travail with a child. You could carry it, but you couldn't birth it. He's saying you've had miscarriages. For more are the children of the desolate than the children of the married wife, saith the Lord. Verse 2, I can get into all this. Enlarge the place of thy tent. And let them stretch forth the curtains of thine habitations. Spare not. Lengthen the cords. Strengthen thy stakes. Why? Why? Because thou shalt break forth on the right hand and on the left. And thy seed shall inherit. I've come to tell someone the greatest revival this church has going to see is not last month. It's not last year. It's in front of us. We will be bigger than this building. We're stretching ourselves right now so that the building cannot handle us. We're stretching ourselves beyond what this theater can handle. And if you think that's too much for you, don't read Calvary. Because when he decided to save you and save me, he had to stretch for it. He said, come. Unto me, all ye that are weary and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. If I be lifted up from the earth, I will draw men unto me. I couldn't save you just by being here, just by being born, just by healing your loved ones, just by raising the dead. The only way I can save Frisco, McKinney, Little Elm, Prosper, all the suburbs of Dallas, somebody needs to hear. I've got to stretch for them. I've got to reach for them. Well, I don't believe it. I won't believe it unless I see it. He said, you don't believe it, Thomas? Stretch forth your hand. Reach your finger into my side. My stretching is going to get into your doubt. My stretching is going to get into what you don't believe. I'm preaching commitment. I'm preaching another level. I'm preaching dedication. I'm preaching faithfulness to God. I'm preaching stop being a baby. I love you. Don't get mad at pastor. Come on. Don't get mad at me. You'll serve God or money, church or the job, the Lord or the relationship, but you're going to serve something. You'll stretch yourself for something or someone. If 
every dad in here, every mom would do anything possible for their kids. Take every pain away, give them every dream, make everything happen. But you know as well as I do, you can stretch all you want, but there comes a time they've got to pursue and step into what you've pointed them to. You hear me in the Holy Ghost. Never stop stretching. Never stop stretching. Pastor, when are we going to stop multiply? Are you ready? Never. Never. Oh, I don't know if I can do that. I know you can't, so get out of the way. I'm looking for some people that can. Because I promise you, there are people that will say, whatever I've got to do to win my coworker, to win my best friend, to win my spouse, I'm going to do it. I spoke to several people in several regions after Multiply this last month. And I've, t and I've had a meeting with all of your leaders. And they can, most of them are in here tonight. And they can attest to this. And we heard several different types of feedback. And we're so blessed to have a, so many guests. I mean, it's crazy the amount of guests. I'm, I mean, we had headquarters emailing us this week. Multiple people from United Pentecostal Church headquarters emailed me saying, we're hearing about multiply the reports. Go after it. Keep going. We're behind you. This is the Lord. I'm not. But I felt the Lord quicken me. He said, you've got church on Sunday. you got insane, powerful prayer meetings on Monday night. You ought to try coming to one. It'll knock you out. Uh, you got Wednesday night. You got discipleship Sunday night. Youth on Friday night. He said, I want Multiply to be about fellowship. So starting next month in December on Multiply, which is the first Wednesday, I think it's December 6th or something like that, we're going to have a Christmas party at all five regions in January, a New Year's party. I'm going to make fellowship fun around this thing. It's not going to be boring. I heard some of you. I heard some of your feedback. As critical as it was. Some of you heard your feedback and you haven't been to church since. But let me tell you something. These leaders are doing everything they can to give you an atmosphere that's easy for you to bring a guest to. We've remapped some things. It's going to be basically fun and fellowship from now on at Multiply, a lot of laughter. I'm done sending you the sermons. You don't even watch them anyway. I'm done sending you those things, and I want you to have a blast and have fun. Why? Because when they feel your love and your laughter, they're going to come in here. And when they come in here, they're going to get the Holy Ghost like Cassandra did last Sunday, like Adrian did last Sunday. They were at Multiply Wednesday night, and then they came Sunday, and God filled them with the Holy Ghost. That's what we're after. I need you to engage it. I need you to make it fun. we got all kinds of stuff we're planning. But I'm telling you, we're stretching. Every church I know, every church I've preached at for 20 years, had the same nasty, frustrating theme. We're waiting on the Lord. Lord, send the rain. I would, like, make me puke. He's not going to do it. God, they, I, I would get there, and they'd say, we're believing God for 100 to get the Holy Ghost tonight. I'm like, there's 12 people in your church. There's not going to be 100 to get the Holy Ghost. It's not going to happen. But show me a church that will stretch for it, <laughs> that will reach into prosper, Pilot Point, Anna, Sherman, McKinney, wherever. Show me a church that will reach for their friends and neighbors. You got to come. You got to come. You got to come. And I'll show you a church that God is going to restore and heal and give life to. I love you tonight. I want to pray with you right now in the Holy Ghost. I want to pray for you. 
I want to pray that God gives you someone to invite. I want to stir it up right now. Because if I let multiply die, it's on me. If I let the vision die, it's on me. But don't think for a second I'm easing up off the gas pedal. I'm pushing it farther down now than ever. I want us to be ready to witness God right now in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth. I pray you'd open up the doors and the floodgates for your people to have easy conversations with hungry people. I don't want us to find the debaters. I want us to find the arguers. I don't want us to find the ones that are not committed. But God, I'm asking you right now, would you order our steps and help us find the people that say, yeah, I'm coming. I want to be at this. Let me, yeah, let, please let me come. I want us to find people that won't fight us, that won't argue, but that will come. Eastern region. Eastern region, let it happen. Hello, Bohoshuk. Where's the next meeting at in Eastern region? Where's it at? Princeton? Is that your guys? In Jesus' name, let their parents come. Let their families come. In the name of Jesus, let it begin to break. Northern region, if you're in the northern region, raise your hand. I speak guests to come to the north. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, let the guests come to the north. Would you pray for the north right now? They've been fighting and warring and trying, but the devil's trying to block something. There will be guests at the next multiply. There will be guests there. There will be guests there. There's intercession in here. There's real prayer in here trying to get loose. Some of you know we prayed Monday night for all the names. If you weren't at prayer meeting, we prayed for all the names that we put in the box. We were walking around in the Holy Ghost. Something's breaking right now because of that prayer Monday night. Something's going to happen. Somebody's name on those boxes is going to be there. But then multiply. Stretch forth thine hand. He's not saying no. He's saying what you're asking for is bigger than what you are. What you're asking for is greater than what you are. You got to reach farther to receive that type of answer. Oh, I'm in the Holy Ghost right now. I'm in the Holy Ghost. Let it happen in the West, God. Let it happen in the West. Let it happen in the South, God, I pray. There's a revival brewing in the South, God. I pray for people to get the Holy Ghost. I pray for people to bring all their friends. I pray for the house to be so crowded. I pray for the Jay's house to be so crowded that they don't know what to do, and I'll, I'll pay for whatever i got to pay for. I pray that they'd be so blessed with so many people. And I pray for Frisco by the authority of the word of God and the power of the name of the Lord Jesus. Lord, you're sending us a harvest. Let us be the good stewards. God, let us multiply. Let us see revival. Let us follow through. Amen. Amen. Thanksgiving is next Thursday. Be thinking of who you're going to be inviting December 6th to multiply because it's working. It's working.
Let's keep the revival going. Let's keep stretching. I love you. Would you go across the aisle, hug somebody's neck, shake somebody's hand. You're dismissed in Jesus' name. Let's roll.